Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to be playing in my Large Dilutions art journal. So this is the front cover that I covered with um, bits of ephemera a long time ago. And I also pre-prepared some pages within this journal where I just stuck some um, old bits of paper from collections that I'd bought over the years I never did anything with, so I just cut them all up um, and literally just stuck them down into the pages ready for being used uh, at a later date. That's another one that I still haven't used yet. Um, just in one of those days when I don't want to look at a blank page, and this is a great way if you have that, um, sometimes have that block where staring at a blank page really doesn't help you at all. If you pre-prepare some of your pages by sticking bits of paper down um, to work on top of, that sometimes really does help too. So I haven't done any art journaling for the past week or so um, because I've been too busy, um, what with one thing or another. Um, so I've decided today I'm going to have a play with one of my new digi kits that I've created. Um, so this is the Circus Circus digi kit that's now available on my website. Da, 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 da. Um, and features obviously some vintage um, circus imagery um, to play along with, but also two papers, um, eight by eight sized kind of, well, almost approximate eight by eight sized papers that also um, coordinate with my carnival number one stencil. So the pattern's the same. So I've just recreated the pattern um, and coloured it up so I can use this in the background. So great complementary pieces of resources. Now when I printed mine I had a little bit of an accident with the printer um, and then had to go through the process of cleaning all the nozzles and the print heads and all that kind of stuff which you sometimes have to do but this is okay because I will probably end up or I know I will end up covering this bit up anyway with paint or whatever. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to cut out some of these pieces to use on my art journal page and then I'm going to get messy and grab some paint. So I'm going to do some cutting out and then I will be right back. So as you can see I've gone ahead and cut out some of the items that I think I want to play with. I haven't used everything um, but these ones I think I can find a space for on my art journal page. I haven't really got a particular plan or a vision in my head as to how I want it to look. So this is going to be one of those instances where it's just going to it's just going to happen. So I'm just going to pop those to one side and bring my journal back, find that page that I wanted to use. There we go. So the first thing I want to do is just to try and um, knock these images back a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to add some white gesso. So I have some indigo blue white gesso and I'm just going to add some of that to my page. I've got a couple of paint brushes just off to my right hand side here, just off camera. And I'm just going to go over the page and add just a thin layer of the white gesso over everything. Now what that will do, it will A, um, unify the page, but also just knock back those images. You will still be able to see them when the gesso dries. It's, they're not going to disappear completely. Plus, I've still got all that nice texture where the pieces of paper that are stuck down um, all overlap. So I've got some nice kind of texture already built up into the background there without having to add any with stencils and that kind of thing. So it's just literally adding a wash, if you like. So I've done that side and I'm going to do a double page spread. So this is going to take a few seconds or so just to, for me to get a complete coverage over. So I'll just quickly speed through it and join with you again once it's all done. Okay, so it's all dry. As you can see, it's knocked it all back, but you can still see some of that nice patterning in the background. So what I want to try and do now is try and start building up some um, of the pattern from the papers that I've cut out. So I'm going to 
repair some strips from each one. So that's the bit with the black ink at the bottom that I don't particularly want to use. So I'll just put that to one side. Let's see if I can get four pieces out of this. Perfect. Just random tearing. Or you can use one of those um, tearing strips. Sometimes also you could use, um, if you have one, like the, Dilu the Dilusions journaling block because if you tear really really carefully it will actually tear along the edge as well so you've got some controlled tearing if you like so what I'll do with this one is I'll just tear this one up as well into four pieces again not really being too careful nice kind of torn edges look really good. There we go. So what I'll do now is I'll just try and position some of these. I want kind of like a darker edge. So let's just grab maybe that one down there and then I'll put this big blue one up here. Fit just nicely on the page as well so they're just the right kind of size and then I'm going to put an orange one there maybe orange one up there yeah let's kind of mix it up a bit hello Mr Bentley Mr Bentley's been asleep let's kind of do it like that so we've got some nice variation on the colour so we've got blue orange blue orange, orange, blue, orange. So that will do nicely. I'm going to put those down uh, on the page. I'm going to use some matte medium. I've got the indigo blue slap it on. Um, there's not a lot of that left so I may end up employing this Dale Rowney one because they've got lots and lots of that. So I kind of know where I'm going. So I'll start with this piece first. Let's just put some of that down on the page. And I'm not bothered about bumps, wrinkles or, or anything like that with this because it just all kind of adds a little bit of nice texture. So Mr Bentley's digging on one of the beds. What are you doing you monkey? We're all alone this weekend. Ian's away at a steampunk show in um, Portsmouth, so it's quite a few miles away. I'm sure he's having lots of fun. So let's stick that one down across the middle there. Doesn't matter if you mix and match your mediums. I don't actually think there's a lot of this left. Indigo blue one. I'll have to speak to my friends, get them to send me some more. Now you will also have noticed that this sheet of paper I printed out on my um, inkjet printer, <coughs> excuse me, and it isn't running, it isn't bleeding. It's the Epson um, Workforce WF2630. And I know I get a lot of questions about my printer, so I just thought I'd mention the make there. I'll put it up on screen now. So if anybody wants to know what it is, it's got um, or it uses Durabrite ink, which is permanent when dry, which is an absolute godsend when you do and print a lot of art journals or art journal resources, as you can see. None of those colours are moving. I love it. It's probably the best inkjet printer I've ever bought. I don't know whether it's the printer or whether actually it's just it's the ink that it uses. So not much room on my desk there to put some on the back, but so if you can get the Durabrite ink um, for any other printer, then 
that's good news. But I think yeah, it's just the Epson one that I use. I'm sure it's available for other models of Epson printer too. Okay, so that's one side all stuck down. I'm going to do the same thing at this side, but because this has taken me quite a few minutes to do, I think you actually want to sit there and watch me do it again. So what I'll do is I'll either fast forward or just jump to the end. Okay, so that's the last piece stuck down. Just going over, just to even everything out, just to make sure I've not lost anything. There we go. Like I said, there's a few bumps, there's a few wrinkles, but that just adds to that kind of like that vintagey feel. Just drop that in some water. And then I'm going to grab my heat gun, get it all dried off. And now I'll be right back. Okay, so that page is pretty much dry now and has had time to cool down a little bit. Um, so it's still a little bit warm kind of here from the heat gun, but it's dry enough for us to be able to work with. Now, what I want to try and do is again, try and unify some of these colors um, and just knock them back a little bit but not a huge amount. So again, I'm going to grab some more of that white gesso and I'm going to grab my paintbrush again. And I'm just going to add some white paint around the outside just to kind of break up. And again, just down the middle. not putting huge amounts on but it just helps to kind of create a, an uneven border. I've already got one at this side but that's okay. Because I've added matte medium onto this, then there's a coat underneath the gesso. And what that will do is if I think I've got too much gesso on there, then if I just grab a wet wipe, there we go, I can just lightly rub over it and it will remove some of that colour, which is ideal. Okay, so again, I need to get it dry, so I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so that gesso is now dry, so I've still got quite a lot of white in the background here. So I'm going to try and um, add in some more colour into the background, but I want it rough. I don't want it to be matte or I want some of the, the background to still show through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring some of the colour in on this little mat to my side and I'm going to use my brayer again. Um, I know I used my brayer recently on a project, but it's a very underrated and underused tool for building up colour and texture. Now you see how that green kind of matches the green that's in my paper, which was not 100% unintentional. Bearing in mind I created the papers. <laughs> but any kind of light or, or softish green will work for this. And I'm just adding in, like I say, scraps of that colour. You can still see the orange showing through. Uh, just grab some scratch paper. Let's see what we've got over here. Oh, 
come on, that's it. So I've got some scratch paper. Get a nice bit of texture from underneath there, look. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the orange. I don't want a lot because orange and green will invariably end up making mud. Just get a little bit and then just pick out around the edges. Just break it up a little bit. Don't need a lot. And I think actually that's probably going to do it. He says. I'm just adding a bit more to the edges. Like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. Right. Just clean off the brayer. I want to get that dry, so I'll just give it a quick blast. Okay, that's pretty much dry. Um, I'm going to bring in some yellow. I want some yellow to reflect the colour that's actually in the papers. So I'm just going to add some of that there. This particular colour is called Golden Sun. It's rather nice. And I'm just going to just add in, that's it. Just kind of adds in a little bit of connectivity. You can still see the patterning on the paper. That's it. Put a little bit on the edges. It's all kind of starting to look more as one. All that stuff in the background, all those squares are all kind of disappearing now and you can start to see the layers colour and it's starting, in my mind anyway, to look like an old poster that's been torn off the walls. That might just be the way my brain works but that's kind of how I see it in my head. Yep, happy with that. Just clean off that. Okay, so I need to get this nice and dry, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm pretty happy now with the way that this page is starting to build up. Now, we have got some blues in the background there, but I want to just bring some of those blues to the foreground. Now, to do that, I've brought out my Lagoon, which is kind of like a turquoisey blue, and I want to add some of this um, through a stencil. So I'm just going to pop some of that paint down there. Now because I'm trying to stick to similar sort of patterns, similar sort of colours, I am going to use my um, Harlequin, my Carnival stencil. And I've got a cosmetic sponge, so I'm just going to build up some colour on that cosmetic sponge. And I'm just going to start dabbing through and that's Mr Bentley wanting to go back to bed. Very, vo very vocal today, Mr. Bentley. Right. So I'll just pop this down. And I'll go see to Mr. Bentley, and I'll be right back. Right. I'm back. He's a monkey, that one. Right. So just kind of add a little bit of that stenciling. See, it all starts to make sense of itself. to bring some of that up here and it all kind of helps to connect it together. Darker in some areas, lighter than others. Nice. And I'll drop a little bit over here. Probably need a little bit more of the paint. You could keep on going and keep on going with this thing. 
you, know, you can keep on adding layers upon layers and layers of different colour, but I do want some of that kind of white to show through in the end. Let's just connect the two pages together, the left and the right page together by doing a little bit of a transference over here and then the same thing over at this side. Kind of links it all together. There we go. And then I can just finish off with a little bit down here. Just follow the line of the rip. And then down there. Cool. Happy with that. Okay, so I'll put that to one side for drying. And then of course, wet paint. So we need to get it all dry. Okay, so now everything's had time to dry. I've been looking at the page and I've been thinking to myself, there's something missing. And what I think is the fact that that's missing, there's no writing in there. There's no letters, there's no words showing through at all. And I think that's what it needs. And there's also red in these papers here, and there's no red showing through anywhere else. We've got oranges, we've got yellows, we've got greens, and we've got blues, but no reds. So I've dug out my old Dilutions, um, I can't even remember what this uh, stencil's called now, Alphabet Border, that's the one. Um, I was looking for like a, a letter jumble, in fact there we go, Old School Alpha. That's even better, let's put that one to one side. There we go. So this is, you probably can't see it, it's got lots of different letters in all kind of jumbled up and I think that is going to help in some of the areas. But I want to add in some reds, so instead of using paint I'm going to use ink. So I'm going to use my Vermilion Archival ink. Now vermilion is a darker red. It's not bright red. That's carnation red. That's vermilion. And you see the difference. And I think it needs something just a little bit darker. Just to add in a little bit of that kind of contrast. Just get a little bit of what I call garbage writing just in that background, because that's kind of what it's missing. See what I mean? It, it is kind of starting to look a bit better, more unified, which is cool. Try not to rock and shake the camera too much. So those areas that are all kind of showing a bit too much white are perfect kind of target areas to bring this kind of layering into it and it also helps to kind of unify and bring everything together because you can bring it all um, connect like connective tissue between the two or two or three different areas on around the page And you can just add in snippets here and there, just to help. A little bit down there, I think, maybe just some in the middle there. Now bearing in mind, some of this will disappear under, you know, next layers or so you can pretty much add some of this wherever you want just to kind of frame, border, connect, 
just to add interest as in where you think you might need it. There's not a lot down there. I'm only just adding three flushes over. Lighter in some areas, darker in others. If you just take a step back, you can kind of think, yeah, it needs something there, it needs something there, kind of thing. Or not. See, I think I'm pretty much happy with that now, so I need to turn my phone off because it's binging like mad. Okay, so I need to give that a few minutes to dry because our carver link doesn't dry immediately. So I should give that a few minutes to dry. Go make myself a nice cup of tea and then by the time that's done we'll be ready to move on. Okay so everything's now nice and dry and I'm ready to start gluing bits and pieces down onto my page. First of all I'm going to see if I can find some um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, old music paper. Let's see what I've got. That'll do just a sheet of, uh, it's a digi paper. Just close my drawer. So that will be just perfect for layering up maybe these two, just to add a little bit of background to them. So let me see if I can just tear a piece off. Cluster these a little bit. Think that might be big enough for both. Probably the best idea is to actually glue it down, isn't it? Oh, I do love these art journal pages where you've actually got no real clue as to how it's going to turn out. A proper kind of wing it, wing it page. Let's tear that off. Love that phrase, one clown short of a circus. And then we've got enough there. See if I just stuck these down to start off with. So the glue stick I'm using is the is one of the Diane Reevely Creative Diary glue sticks. Diary glue stick. Very inexpensive. Very handy. Let's just tear that down a bit. So too much of a a big border on this one. I've only printed these images on standard printer paper, nothing thick, um, because I knew I was going to be collaging them down. So I like that. Like that, and then I think big one is going to go here, like in that. Throw those to one side. Okay, so let's glue that down. No, I'm not going to use that glue. I'm going to use some of my white spirit. That gives me time to manoeuvre 
it on the page to find the right spot before it grabs. Before that all important grab. And of course it doesn't buckle or wrinkle the paper either, which is ideal. So I'm going to put you about there. Probably about there. And then this one. See, it needs to come down. That's what I mean about finding the right position for it and being able to manoeuvre it until you're happy. There. Okay, and then we're okay to stick him down. Because I've just stuck my finger in it. So I do it just so it comes over the top. And I've positioned it so it's on that band of white, which kind of gives you that movement across to the next page and also is looking in that direction as well. So even better, even a better error. Okay, so let's grab, I think we'll put Mr. Ephelump just there. So it's kind of grounded on that spot there. Since I squished the glue, like it, like it. Then we have this chappy. I'm going to put him so he's standing on top of the elephant. Again. A little bit of glue. Oh dear me. It's a good job this is a spirit based glue, isn't it? Because it just rubs straight off. Okay, so I want to get that Showtime, that Admit ticket in there as well. And I've deliberately not gone around the edges of any of these with Distress Ink or anything, because I don't particularly want them too grungy. I've got a nice kind of vibrant background, so... So, uh, that should now stick down quite nicely on there. It's not um, sticking down. It's hat. There we go. And the last piece is just this little Piro little bit of glue. And then I'm going to put him just lean in on there. Okay. I need to leave that for a few seconds to set and dry and then I'll be right back. So everything's had about a quarter of an hour or so to pretty much dry. So what I want to do is just try and kind of make these images pop from the background just a little bit. So I've got my Stabilo All Pencil, this is the black one, and I'm just going to just really kind of gently just go around the image, adding in 
a little bit of a black line and then because this is water soluble I'll be able to get it and create a kind of like drop shadow effect all the way around it doesn't really need it there but just kind of like where it needs to have a little bit of grounding and maybe just a little bit of a pop against the background just a little bit of curling on some of it but that's okay because I can just grab my little glue stick and just catch those edges when I find them <clears throat> so I've got a water brush so I just need to activate a little bit of that water and just literally just go around the image try not to drag it onto the image itself but just to kind of create a little bit of a kind of like a drop shadowy effect Mainly just to move your book around a little bit just to get the full effect this creates like a, a real subtle drop shadowy effect just helps a little bit just to ground the characters and just lifts them from the background just a tad particularly where it's a really kind of like busy background See how it just helps to make that pop. Okay, so I'm going to go create a little bit of a dark shadow around this one. So this may take just a couple of goes. And then we'll do the same thing under there. Just create a little bit a drop shadowy effect there too. When you go over it a second time it kind of, kind of just waters it down a little bit. It just helps to blend it a little bit more. You can see how it's now started to pop around there. Just make it a little bit darker. Just helps to kind of lift it from that background a little. I 
and the more water you add the more subtle it becomes. And of course you can always go back in if you wanted to and just add a little bit more and just keep on going until you're happy with the depth of colour and the amount of shade and shadow. And then we'll just add a little bit more up there. Just some inside there. Tiny, tiny amount. <coughs> Excuse me, could do with a drink. If anybody's putting the kettle on. What I like about using this, these kind of like water soluble pencils. They're really kind of loose and really kind of flexible. I love that. Just a little bit more. That. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a blast with the heat gun and then I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so that's pretty much kind of started to dry now. Um, I did miss underneath the Showtime ticket, so I've gone in and added that as well. I just also added another little bit around that corner there just to kind of differentiate between those two pieces there and then just went a little bit heavier around this side there. As you can see that's dried really nicely down there to create that ground in down at the bottom of those characters there. So I'm pretty much happy with that. But what I wanted to do just to kind of finish off was just to in uh, introduce some more black. I've got a Pigma Micron pen here and all I'm going to do, hello Mr Bentley Booze, is I'm going to just draw um, a kind of a, just a, a loose-ish kind of border just to kind of finish it off. Nothing too elaborate, just a kind of black border all the way around the pages. Just to kind of finish it. And just quickly around that side. And that should just help. Because we introduced black into the middle, it also helps just to introduce a little bit of black around the outside too. Now I could go in and do some black splatters, but I'm not going to. Not today. So I'm not going to do any splatters at all today, but I could, because they would have looked kind of nice in there as well. But for the time being, I'm happy with the way the page looks, so I'm not going to do any more to it today. I may come back to it again in a couple of weeks. Who knows? It just depends on how the mood takes me. So for the time being, I'm actually just going to sign it down here at the bottom and put today's date which is, da, 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 if you can remember, the 29th. Good grief, where's the month gone already? It'll soon be time for another mission inspiration. So there you go, that's it. That's my one clown short of a circus which is exactly how I'm feeling today. Um, that's it. So that's my double 
at journal spread in my large dilutions journal. So I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.